The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on this 29th day of April. My pleasure to be here. And 877-927-6648 is the number to call. And let's look at the Dow. Dow's now up 17 at 26,561. It's been a real... Actually, the best way to show this is, look, look at this. This is the RTY M19. This is the futures. This is the two-minute chart in the futures. Look at this range. I mean, it's just been a tiny little range up and down. Actually, I shouldn't say tiny range in price. The price has actually been quite good. But once it established uh, the big up move, it's just been kind of stuck there, up and down and up and down. But even better, if you look at the ESM, the E-mini March, just gone to a leg C in the two-minute chart. Uh, leg B in the, there we go, and leg B in the five-minute chart. Uh, just kind of like, uh, yeah, I guess the leg B as well in the 10-minute uh, chart. Yeah, we go. we're looking at, let me show you, let's drag this across as the 10-minute chart. Just going on for quite a while. Uh, well, today, early in the morning, 4 o'clock, and you can see just from early this morning at about 7 o'clock, it's down to the 29, we call it, let's see, 29, I think, 37-ish area. Now it's at 29.46. It went to 29.48.25. So you can see there's a relatively narrow trading range considering that uh, this is a 10-minute chart, and usually the swings are much, much bigger. What I am looking at now, let's get to the nitty-gritties. In the Dow, you can see there's this pattern, and I drew in. I'm going to make this a blue, just so that you know that I'm looking at patterns, and patterns are very important in my work, obviously, as a technician. Click. All that work. Yep, blue. The color blue. Blue it is. And make it a little thicker so you can see what I'm looking at here. So this is a, the pattern that I'm anticipating is going to be the test of strength. If there is a break into, I'd say to subscribers, if there is a break of maybe a plus 60s by 10 past one this afternoon, I have to consider that not only are we going to try to test the 26,695 area, the, the previous high on the 23rd of March, but with this doji candle, that'll take out the candle high of last week. And the doji candle, for me, there's a particular rule, a close above a small Doji candle, that's a, like a plus sign. In this case, you can see the, the, let me expand this. You can see the legs right there, and there's the, the cross horizontal move. A close above it suggests that you've now turned the closing opening price of the previous week, which is around about 26,530, into a support level, and that there could be another move to the upside close that this week on Friday above. Let me give you the number, 26,695, which suggests that next week, the following week, you could bounce a little bit, probably come back. But this level is going to be key support because they were close below 26,530, which suggests now you're going to the bottom of the, uh, the wick at the downside. And that one is 26,310. My thinking here is that I don't know yet the deepness of any retracement because there's been a big rotational move to the upside and the downside. We've had every other day, we've had some Dow spike, Dow stock spike higher while another one pulls back. And this kind of mix says it's going to be a bit of a tussle. And that's what I'm thinking. A tussle says there should be a move towards 26,200, 26,000 in this shorter term period. I have to change that completely if there's a push into the 26,700 area. Then I have to say, uh-oh, this is exactly the moment we're going to go for the all-time high of 26,951. We saw that in the Dow, in the S&P, that the all-time high was 2940.91. What was the high today? Whoops, 29, hey, wait, 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 something's wrong with this picture. Ah, 2940.91. And today we went to 29, 
46.23. We've made a new all-time high. I've got this at G slash C in the daily chart. And it would be unusual for the Dow not to, in sequence, become the next recipient of a move to all-time highs benefit. I am just thinking right now that there's enough shakiness in the Dow just shorter term to say, yeah, maybe not quite yet. And then later on, I do think we break out. And that's going to be a breakout that's going to include the follow-up with the IWM, the Russell 2000, then picking up steam. Right now, the Russell 2000 is acting pretty nicely, but it is way below the 173.39 all-time high. It's at 159.36. I mean, that's a long way to go. Good action, but I'm just thinking that it might take a little longer. That's all. Okay. Next thing we're looking at here is within the, the context of the, the market, we looked at the S&P, but look at the QQQ. The QQQ, which is the, the, I, the Invesco QQQ Trust Series, the NDX 100 trading vehicle, hasn't yet made a new recovery high or all-time high because 191.22 was the high of the 25th. That was Thursday. Friday there was a pullback, but a nice close, but underneath the previous high. And now we're still under that. But not bad action at all. The Magnes Goods Castics at 91% is starting to drop, but 91% is still very strong. And that weekly chart is really strong. All right, now let's get to some other things. Within the context of the different markets, I just wanted to show you that gold looked like it was acting well. But I have to tell you, if it closes underneath 12, now it's a new number. It was 1268, 12, I said for last Friday. This Friday, I just have to say, I'm going to make it a little lower, 12 instead of 1268. I'm going to make it 1265. I want to give it a little bit of room. Sometimes you nick, you can see right here, you nick an up channel. This is what I call the Chapman Wave inside track propellant support level. But if you take that out twice and close under it on the second time, that's usually not such a good thing. Okay? So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, all right, you had your big move, big candle on Friday. We've had an inside bar, not a very pretty candle right now, down eight. Let's look at silver, and that was one of the things I was talking about on Friday, Thursday and Friday, saying, you know, silver's suggesting that it's going to be tough for gold to break out with silver, although silver was a little bit of a better chart pattern than the uh, gold, uh, just based on uh, the daily and weekly, just as a chart pattern. Not to say it's good, it's just better than gold. And here's the other thing. If you put it together with the EUR, USD, the euro dollar currency pair, because they kind of go in the same direction, you can see this has just started a, a nice candle right here after Friday's strong uh, a new low, then a strong move up over the Thursday a high, which is good, and then a, not a bad close. This is good because if there's a close above yesterday, uh, Friday's 1.11736 high, and it's at 11715 right now. If there is a close above that, that suggests that this whole body right here of Friday of 1.117 or 1.111, that could be a very nice cushion at this particular point. That's the way we want to look at it. And as we're about to go out in this particular uh, seg segment for a break, um, you can see gold is down just five pips at 97.98, holding really well after making a leg D at 98.33. Nice action, good technical action with the Magni and Stochastic. I like the dollar. We are on the dollar. I'll be back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi right, everyone, we're back. Dow's up 19, S&P's up 5.37. Now, this is what I would be looking at because we've got Google earnings coming out uh, later today. Here's go Goog. I'm going to still keep saying Goog even though it's called alphabet. How do I get alphabet? Anyway, I've got leg C here. I don't I don't see any reason why I should change it to an alternate count. Uh, maybe F slash C. I don't see any reason. I think G is good. Make these strong, stochastic strong. And earnings come out uh, after the close. It's up 1.30 at 1273.48. Leg D in the weekly. And the all-time high was 1273.89. The high today is 1275.09. It has now taken out that previous high. And one, two, three. Is this a brand new leg B to, uh, no, A to the upside or G slash A? To tell you the truth, I, I thought about this over the weekend. And the only conclusion I came to is that for it to go from the 12, I, at that point, it wasn't an all-time high, but it was real close. To say that it would go from an all-time high down to the December low, below 1,000, something absolutely horrendous in, in Alphabet's uh, business plan ha has to go wrong. So I'm going to put you G slash A. My thinking is that Google is going to be the lead. It's going to tell us about the major, major market top win and if it comes. Uh, in 2020 or whatever it is, that's really what I'm going to be watching. One of the reasons is I could give it an alternate count here by saying this is an E slash A because that peak D could have started and you move up. None of none of the technical suggests that that's good Chapman wave counting. I'm just going to be as strict as possible. G says be, a, be careful because there could be a sharp pullback. It doesn't say you go all the way back down. It just says, you know, you could give back a pretty good chunk of the last uh, the last month's move from under 1,200. So that's what I'm saying. But at this particular point in leg C, it says maybe there's uh, maybe even there's a pullback because of the they have fabulous whatever. But then they talk about the outlook it's a little uncertain. Who knows what they say? Maybe there's a bit of a pullback going to the early morning tomorrow, and by Thursday you're at a new uh, all-time high. That's in leg D, and then together with the market, maybe we start to see a big consolidation. But I, 
I'm watching it closely. And at this particular point, I've been anticipating for quite some time, so far incorrectly, that Google is the one that's going to come out with some kind of communications network or apparatus or app or whatever it is um, to just leapfrog over the Verizons and the Comcasts, uh, ATTs, Sprint, etc. I'm not sure how that's going to work. But that's just my thinking that they will have some product. I haven't seen anything yet about it other than that they do have the capacity to do something like that. But maybe that's just not in the game plan because since, I mean, basically they're in advertising. But what a way to grab the advertisers that are using those telecommunications devices. Anyway, that's not for me to decide. We're just looking at the chart so far. Excellent action. Um, major support is at 12. 54 if there's any disappointment. All right, here we go. Um, that's Google. Now, tomorrow, we've got GE, and the question came up, GE, is this a good time to be looking at GE as a long position? I'm going to say that I looked at this, and I said, in the last move up, remember, we had George from New York saying, where would I add? And I'd, off the top of my head, I think I'd said between 920 and 880. It did get down to 9, I think it was 890-something. Yeah, 898. So that would be the area that would have been an add to if you're already in the position. And he he had discussed this uh, as a um, a leap. That is a very long term, like an option, a long term option that he had bought. So that would be the add to position. Now the next question came up: um, Would I consider that GE is making some kind of a bottom? Actually, a couple of people have asked this. Is G worth owning? That was number one at this level. Has the risk been put into the stock? I mean, let's face it, stock that drops from the 30s and 40s and 50s and goes down to $6.66, trading now at 9.66, up 30%. Um, this is off the bottom. This is good. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, the MACD in the weekly chart is good. <clears throat> Stochastic says it's pulled back sharply. It's trying to cross positive. It'll need the daily. So the daily has just gone to a leg A, B, C. It's in leg C. <clears throat> and with earnings coming out, I've, got, I've heard this guy a couple of times, and then I didn't listen to him the last time he was on. I think maybe he was on with Kramer. I'm not sure. But I... Okay. Let's forget about what he says. Let's look at what the price has done. What the price has done is gone through a huge arch formation. The most impressive one is the low of August of 2015 at 1937, and then it screams to a round number, peak C minus. In a monthly chart, I hardly ever get C minuses, except you're under major, uh, major high from previous, which, of course, you have been. Let me show you something. Yeah, GE, look at this. This was once 42.15. I believe it was even higher. Let me just double check here because I remember, yeah, there it is, 60.75 back in August of 2000. I remember a little later when Welsh retired and he was on CNBC actually uh, having a conversation with uh, Emelt. And Emelt was saying, I, I'm going to take what you've done and I'm going to grow this and we're going to this and we're going to that. And, of course, Emelt did every single thing. What? You name, as a textbook for Harvard uh, Business School, name anything that you could do wrong, and pretty much email did that, always with big bragioso, thinking I've just done the most amazing thing in the uh, financials. We're getting out of financials when he should have been getting into financials. He got into oils when he should have been getting out of oils. He went into energy when he should have been getting out of energy. I mean, your health care, I mean, you could just name it. And then what has happened to Emelt? He, he gets made, I believe it was CEO or something like that, of Athena Healthcare. And as luck would have it, he gets this incredible bonus package to leave G GE. This is what happens with these guys. And he goes to, I don't know how he even found a job, but he goes to Athena Healthcare because Bush and um, the, the CEO at the time or whatever he was, one of the founders, um, could talk things up just like Emelt. So they were one of a kind. And lo and behold, they get a takeover offer. I mean, the guy. Oh, you know, okay. 
enough of this. So General Electric, I think it's going to take time. I think if you have a very long, I don't see why GE, one of the first the major Dow stock, is just going to disappear. I think that they're starting to do things right. I think it's going to take time. I think the price has punished it heavily. I don't think it's quite done. But will it go back to $6.66? At this particular point, he's just going to make, well, I can't remember his name, a really, some really bad decisions. And I'm suspecting out of all the decisions he makes, he makes one bad decision, but he actually makes a bunch of very good decisions that you can't see right now, but in the future will turn out to be good. So the answer is, if you're starting to accumulate a position in GE at 967, oh, you could wait for a little bit of a pullback. But right here, if you have nothing, you could start a position here at 968. Even if there's a drop of a point tomorrow, I think the work has been done. That's what the chart suggests. Maybe not all the work, but it's getting there. I'll be back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hi, folks. So the Dow's up 30, S&P's up 7.5. What we're looking at here is the uh, GE trading at 966, uh, up $3 from its low. And my, my answer to the question is it's trying to fill the gap here. I suspect that there'll be a little bit more good news than bad news tomorrow. Maybe it gaps up, tries to fill the gap. So I'm saying, yeah, you know, even if it gaps down, I think a chunk of the work, I just don't want to see it go underneath the low that was made at 880, uh, 879 on the 15th of April. A close under that would say you've got a little more time and price to the downside. But even then, looking out, the question was for the big picture, and the big picture suggests that the, um, the CEO of uh, 
at least the new head of GE has a plan and he's been trying to implement the plan, which I think is going to be very difficult to do. But at the same time, he is working on a, a much better plan that was in place before, which was to acquire anything that was at the top so that you could watch it go down to the bottom and just mess GE up. I think this is a different kind of scenario. So I do like it looking at we do not have a position in GE. I had thought about it on the pull, big pullback to that nine area, but I just decided there are other things that we're looking at. I We have longer term outlooks because of my webinar that I did a few weeks ago. We are positioning ourselves within that. Um, question I had here was, uh, let's see, what was the question? Um, BAC is a big breakout if it closes at 31 with a question mark. And the answer is absolutely. Look, this is a leg C and we are long Bank of America. Uh, the financials, I said before in my webinar, I said, I think they the participants now in this next phase, together with transports and just other sectors that have been lagging. We still want to remain along the dollar for it's over a year now. I think the dollar is telling us about our economic strength. That's really the only thing that I'm looking at. I don't understand all the other um, the manipulations that go on within currencies. You've got a left side, right side, 31.92 high of August the 10th, the week of August the 10th and the weekly chart of Bank of America. That's my upside target in this particular move. It's leg D in the weekly chart, but it has now broken out decisively with today's move I showed over the weekend to subscribers on my opening call. That would be a breakout above that down channel, the uh, Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. You want to go above that, close above it. I think that's what we'll do by tomorrow for the last day of the month, I like this. And if I question, what was the question I had here about Goldman Sachs? Uh, GT says, uh, oh, just list all the, all the bank stocks. GS, let's see what Goldman Sachs is doing. Right here, Goldman Sachs is up very nicely. It's up two at 207. But I have to tell you, it's, it's taking a lot of work to go above the 200 period exponential moving average. My thinking here is, that G Goldman Sachs will be a player in this next big move in the Dow. Uh, what I mean by the big move is the move that's going to take us, uh, take the Dow to new all-time highs, et cetera, and it's now participating a little bit. It's not good enough for me. It's at 207 right now. I want to see it close, a weekly close above 215.10, 214.10 to 215.30, let's say. Somewhere above that says it's, it's broken. All resistance levels is challenging the ugly, really ugly candle of the start of the waterfall decline from uh, Mar that's November the 16th at 222.31. I want to see us get heavily into that away from the 200 period moving average weekly, which is this point is at 207.52. Hasn't even gotten there yet, but it looks good. So answer those questions. Now, I just got an email in one of those junk mail things, but I got it anyway. Uh, dear Basil Chapman. For immediate release, April 29th, 2019, press release, New York City Council passes landmark building carbon emissions reduction bill affecting existing buildings and new construction. New York City policy to be featured in NAP Hafen 19 Passive House Conference, build the world we want. Who? Um, New York City Council has passed intro bill 1253 with the explicit goal of reducing building carbon emissions rates 80% by 2050. The bill is aimed at the buildings with 25,000 square foot of floor area and larger, which represent a majority of greenhouse gas emissions produced by buildings in New York City. Now, I want to talk to that issue just from my perspective. Larry Culp, thank you very much in the den. Yes, uh, Larry Culp is the guy, CEO, Chairman of General Electric since October 2018. Now, what I want you to talk about is even in automobile design, automobile manufacturing, automobile functionality, as long as I can remember, I, I have always thought, why, why do they not try to be as efficient as possible and get the maximum horsepower, satisfy everybody? Um, it just seems to me an absolutely logical set of parameters that you put on the backboard that comes to the front part of your thinking as you're designing these things. Be efficient, be efficient, be as uh, structurally um, apt as possible, be as um, efficient, et cetera, et cetera, all right? At the same time, I look at the buildings and I look at sometimes, well, I, we've got Newton North High School just down the hill. I can see it from a window here. Um, and 
The lights are all on at night. And I'm saying to myself, maybe that's a safety feature or not. But if they are on, surely they should all be, they should be using some like LEDs and all that. I don't know what they've done. I'm just saying that you go to New York City and you see the light. It's fabulous. It looks great. But is that efficient? Is that a best use? Maybe they could do that, but do it in other ways. So when I, I have no qualms for legislating more efficiency. But when you've got a bunch of hacks that are sitting on the floor, with no nothing, I mean, who, 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 really, they're not the builders. They aren't the people that do this. They're just people that sit there and have to legislate this and legislate that. I have to wonder, 80% reduced by 80% by 2050, which would include the big, big, massive market decline that I'm anticipating when this is all over. These guys, no one will even remember that there was an emissions uh, whatever. Uh, I mean, be practical, 80%. Other things happen along the way. There's more efficiency. It force it does force it forces uh, creativity. Maybe it will force the kind of thinking that says, you know what, LED is a, a beautiful way to do it. Let's see if we can do the same thing in uh, the way electrical current is is generated. Just all sorts of things that just leapfrog the issue. So maybe it's a good thing. But I'm just saying, just to get a number, what 80 percent? What do they know about 80 percent? Um, but we'll see. So I, I have no problem with saying, hey, hey, be more efficient, be more efficient. But it's like the same thing with the automobile. It did produce efficiency, but then after a while, manufacturers start to get around it by doing a whole bunch of other things. But they never think of the public. With the public, when they want big, look, at, look, go, look on the road, just drive around. They, cars are getting bigger and bigger like they, they, they always do. It's just nature just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So there's another factor that you have to put into account. So uh, it's very complex. So, all right, bravo to New York to actually put that into place. But I'm saying maybe you got a little too aggressive. That's all. All right, let's get back to Goldman Sachs. Looking quite good. I want to two, up in the 215s. I'll be very impressed. Now, shorter term, what, a question I got was IYT. When I, okay, I can get rid of that uh, email. <laughs> That's gone. E email and a little speech there. Um, uh, transports, UPS, et cetera. Okay, so you've got the IYT. We are long from 86s, it hit 200, and it's now at 194. I'm suspecting that this weekly chart is telling us a little bit of a breather here. Yeah, maybe it coincides with the market, of the, the, the Dow is a little bit of a breather, and then we start to rally. I want to see the Dow Industrials with the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Industrial Fund moving in concert they go full right I'll be back in a moment we'll talk about if you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you the security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg Florida the Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits which makes these lots valuable the investment is anywhere from 30,000 to 75,000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when and gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So, um... IYT, let me just say that uh, there's been a fabulous move. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some give back at 194, 192 to 190 could be very strong support. Just watching it closely here. And if it does, uh, by this time next week, if it's gone above 200.42, wow, that's a, that's a really good action. So uh, let's just watch this closely. I was asked, a, just, I wasn't asked a question, I was just told, reminded, the GWPH, GW Pharmaceuticals, PLC, Medical Marijuana, uh, I think it's a British company, um, is uh, has earnings coming out. Uh, earnings coming out. Six, was it? Yeah, hello, Basil. Earnings uh, for GWPH are on May the 6th. So would you like to know? If you don't already know, all the best, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, you know, I completely forgot. Uh, just um, it slipped my mind when... They would have the earnings. Yeah, you know, it's been in a sideways consolidation, uh, slightly down uh, trending channel. Let me just draw this in. I'll show you what I mean. Today's just popped out of that channel uh, intraday. Let's see if it can close there. This is good action. 171 is still one of my favorites of the big, uh, at least from I can understand it. I don't do a lot of work on this. I'm just saying the ones that I followed. This is the one that's held very nicely on the pullbacks. I like it as just talk about long-term holding. This is probably the one that I've been discussing with uh, at least for at least a, uh, maybe, is it a year? Yes, a year already with uh, subscribers that this is the one. We actually have the ETF because I think that's the safer way right now to play it. Um, had nice, uh, nice percentage gains, got in recently, added to the position. Um, uh, I like I like the I like the area. I think this is an area that has potential longer term. But be prepared for sudden declines. It's not going to be all smooth sailing. This is in its absolute infancy. In ten years' time, you'll look back and say, "Wow, I could have bought whatever it is at whatever number." Because I think it's just a growth area in many ways. Uh, so, all right, that's that's GWPH. Next question I had was, and I can't really answer this. Um, where did it go? Was a question on the VIX. Now, where did that go? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. VIX, VIX, oh, there it is, VIX question. Uh, ben had asked, hi, Basil, as a subscriber to your informative newsletter, I want to see if I get your feedback on the weekend article blur from Bloomberg regarding hedge funds shorting um, of VIX at either all-time high, historical high. Thanks, Ben. You know, Ben, I looked at that, and I must say, I don't... <sighs> Let me see if I can find that. I had it there. I gave it, showed it to subscribers. Um, let me see. Uh, um, VIX high reading. Oh, it shouldn't be high reading. Let me just see what they say. Uh, look at the PM Volante shares. Sentiment November. All right, I can't find it right away. I had it earlier on. Um, very high shorting. 
of the VIX. And they said it was, a, it was bullish. Head funds are shorting the VIX at a rate never seen before. Here, let me show you something. So this, which, this is Bloomberg. Um, slide it across here. There we go. Hedge funds are shorting the VIX at a rate never seen before. Now, shorting the VIX implies that the VIX should go down. So I don't understand why they say um, speculators net short VIX positions are at all-time records. And they say, uh, straight just let me say, last speculator, mostly hedge funds were net short about 170,000 VIX futures contracts on April. 23rd, the largest such position on record weekly CFTC data that dates back to 2004 show. Commonly known as the stock market fear gauge, aggressive bets against the VIX are, depending on your worldview, I don't know where they got the worldview from, evidence of either confidence or complacency. So then why would it say... Um, Later on, they say that should be a big positive for the stock market. I'm not sure. Is, is this a market melt-up? So I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, all right, let's just not get carried away here. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Let's look at the VIX index. And as far as I can tell, the VIX index has a kind of a – I like to look at patterns that repeat – and the pattern that has repeated is that there's an incredible spike to the upside on some hysterical uh, piece of information that turns out to not be as bad as everybody thought. High yields back at 50.30. That was the end of, uh, that was February, I think it was, uh, February of, yep, 2018. Uh, remember, the Dow made its all-time high in January of, and uh, New York Stock Exchange made its high in January of 2018. It has never gotten back to that level. The others have sequentially gotten there. The Dow did make a new high in uh, October. So then it, it plunges, and it goes down to the 10.17 level in August of last year. Then it has two big spikes. One was the yields, tariffs, China, Saudis. It was everything, but it never went that high. It only went to about 28, 29. Pulls back, holds a key support level, just under the 200-period moving average, goes to the 14, and then spikes up to 36.20. That was the same news, the same everything, and that was mostly it was about yields. And then what happens at 36.20, it plunges, and it plunges to the low of three weeks ago, to the 11.03 level. Uh, was that three weeks ago? Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 11.3. No, no, that was last week. 11. Yeah, 11.03 was on the 19th of, um, yeah, 19th of April. April. And now what we're looking at is um, it's at 12.84. It's up 11. But look what's happened. It's made a, a very quiet, very subtle peak. Hey. Then it's gone to a peak B last week, that sudden uh, negativity. It didn't affect the market all that much, but it did pull back a little bit. Uh, the market did. So it hit the 50-period moving average at 14 point, 14 point 30. And now it's trading two points lower. Well, that was two points lower. Now it's a little less. It's at uh, B, at 12.83. But look at the pattern. You see this almost like a doji candle from three weeks ago. You see, I drew in the cup formation. It's really like a bowl formation, a very long, elongated bowl formation. I'm suspecting that we're getting really close to a spike to the 200-period moving average in the weekly chart of 15.09. The 200-period moving average in the daily is up at 16.09. And the monthly is at 18.13. And I suspect we're getting kind of close to some kind of little bit of sour news. Maybe not even bad news, just sour news. So that we can see a pop. And the pop says it goes above that 14, uh, 14 level. And the next thing you know, we're trading um, at new recovery highs for the VIX. And it hasn't yet gone to the high of the 28th of uh, March, but it goes to the high somewhere around the uh, 1430 area. And that's the big test. If it holds on a weekly basis at 1430, I think we start to see softness in the general market all around. And if it goes even high into the 15s, all of a sudden we start to see sharper moves to the downside. Then close lower and you start to see triple digit 
down moves to the downside. But in the meantime, in the 12s, under 13, this is this is very good. This is bullish. This is uh, uh, saying that things are good. Now, I'll talk to the longer term in a moment when we get back. We'll be back. We'll talk about W as well, which is here in Boston, Wayfair, I believe it is. Wayfair Inc. Hmm, nice move. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Don't forget, Steve comes up, comes Dave. Uh, Tom O'Brien will be back. And uh, check out my opening call. I uh, got some real nice positions there. We did get stopped out of a couple of things the other day, but uh, uh, more than making up for it with the others. What, what we're looking at is W question of the den. Yes, I do like this is only a leg A to the upside. It's at 159, but I would not like to see it pull back in the next, by Friday, this coming Friday. If there's anything that happens to it and it starts to trade under 153, 152 support, I'd say to you, whoa, be a little careful. But if you're long already, this is really nice. And this is what you want to see. Very strong. The MACD turned up. Stochastics is 77%. Wait until it gets to 80%. That'll be even better. But this is good. Can it go to the all-time high to actually break to um, above 173.72? I'd go step by step right now. So if you aren't in it and you're looking to get in, just safety sake says to me, wait for a little bit of a pullback between 156 and 155, and then you could start a position. But if you're in already, that's really good. Next thing, yes, you're long, then great. Congratulations. Good eye, because I think eventually it's going to go to a leg D in the weekly chart above the uh, 172 uh, high. That'll start a leg D. So congratulations there. Now, a couple of things I had, questions that I want you to get to. I'll talk a little more tomorrow about the VIX index. 
And as far as nuke is concerned, I didn't mean to put anybody down there. I just thought, you know, when you legislate like this, these are, it's easy to take these big steps with the mouth, but you've got to do it indeed, and that's going to be very difficult to, to, to undertake. But I agree, that's the idea. You should go in that direction, but I don't know if the actual numbers are correct. Okay, here we go. Um, I had a question that I needed to get to now before the, the, we close out the session. Yes. So in the Dow, you'll see what I'm looking at here. The Indu, the Dow is up a little bit. It's up 37 at 26,580. Every, every pullback has been bought Friday and today. I think that that's good action. How long can it last? Because the stochastic is under 80% to 76%. The MACD has turned negative. I'm watching this closely. We're actually looking at the downside here on the shorter term. We'll see how that works out. But in the meantime, I explained about that candle. Look at that candle for the week. That's going to be very important. So I'm signing off right now, handing it over to Steve Rhodes. I have a wonderful day. Check out my opening call, front page of TFNN. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day.